Welcome back. It's 841. High school sports are now in full swing, and with that comes the risk of injury, especially concussions. Dr. Manny Brito is the medical director of the Concussion Center at Palm Beach Children's Hospital. He's joining us this morning to talk about concussions specifically. Good morning, and thank you for joining us. Happy to be here. Boy, uh, we are now like up to speed on concussions because there's a lot of information out there about it that we didn't know perhaps before, and they can happen in any sport. What should parents uh, and coaches be telling their children to protect them against concussions? So you're absolutely right. The awareness about yeah. concussions is there. Uh, it's been a hot topic for the last five to ten years. And really the most important thing that any coach or parent should be aware of is that any time uh, an athlete uh, gets hit in the head uh, and immediately the, the athlete is complaining of a headache or dizziness, mm -hmm. the suspicion of a concussion should be raised. And in most sports, uh, sporting areas there is either a designated coach or parent or athletic trainer that's been trained on concussions right. now with whatever league they may be in. To, to notice what's going on. So that is exactly. like the first sign, a headache. And dizziness. And dizziness. Yes. You know, a, a lot of times you see like soccer players, you know, mm -hmm. a soccer ball isn't real heavy and they use their head. I mean, right. you know, can, can too much of that lead to concussion? So that's a great question and the answer to that is that we're not sure. Okay. What we do know is for instance in soccer with kids uh, uh, lots of studies have been done and actually the most common cause of concussions with kids playing soccer is actually player to player contact I and see. not so much heading the ball. Heading the ball is about 30% yeah. of the concussions that you cause. You can hit your head against another person's head or their knee or whatever because you don't have a helmet in, Absolutely. in soccer. Okay. Uh, football, probably the, the worst, right? It has the highest incidence of concussion amongst the most popular sports compared to, while soccer might have the greatest number because there's more, actually more kids playing right. soccer than there is playing tackle football but the highest incidence is in, is in tackle football. All right. How long is the recovery process and how soon can children return to sports? That's a great question. So it all depends on the individual. So basically when you're back to school and you're tolerating school and you're tolerating your regular activities and light physical activity and you're not getting any symptoms like a headache mm -hmm. or other mm -hmm. symptoms of concussion, then you're ready to go back to do what we call a gradual return to play where little by little you increase the intensity of your physical activity until you reach a full practice and then if that goes well and you don't have any symptoms then you're allowed to go back that typically in children is a little bit longer than it is with adults for many reasons and it's roughly between two and four weeks but it's dependent on the individual okay, so what is the concern now if you have multiple concussions great question so again that's a moving target uh, we're not sure now if you properly treat a concussion, what I say in my kids in the clinic and the parents, if you properly treat each concussion, then you follow that patient individually. And for instance, uh, to have someone stop playing a sport for someone that really wants to play it is a humongous decision. Right, right. So it would have to depend on the individual, the physician taking care of them, and the parents, whether the multiple concussions is uh, creating a problem. For example, let's say if you've had several concussions but you're noticing that the athlete is getting a concussion with maybe less severe of a force or the concussion is lasting a longer period of time then there's a risk and benefit and it may not be worth it to continue the the athletic activity so there is no number that you treat and it can depend on the individual sometimes with one concussion yeah. depending on the individual it could be extreme it could be enough that they don't want to participate in the sport anymore. You're right, yeah. And, uh, boy, you see a lot of pro athletes leave a lot of money on the table because they had Correct. their, quote, bell rung. It's a little more serious than just having your bell Absolutely. rung. Absolutely. And let me, let me be very clear that in the, in, out there is this chronic traumatic encephalo uh, encephalopathy, this long-term consequence that's been linked exactly. to concussion. With, when it comes to kids and playing sports, there has been no connection with that and that we're talking just about treating kids with concussions with usually has an excellent prognosis right. which means it's like nothing ever happened if you treat it properly okay excellent good points all the way around thank you for joining us this morning okay thank right. you very much let's check